all seen actors on big budget blockbusters and compelling serious dramas with a huge name behind them. But have you ever seen these actors before they were famous and what sort of films they were doing? Of course, there are some actors who return to their indie roots throughout their career as well. Welcome to Patrol Clip, guys, and today we'll be looking at the top 10 coolest low-budget indie films that starred a now well-known or famous actor. What's interesting about these is that although the film's budget was super small, the actors were still interesting enough in the story to want to be a part of the project. That's what makes some of these picks super unique. But before we begin, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything new from Patrol Clip. Here we go! Down to the bone. Let us start off with the lesser known indie hits that you probably haven't heard of before we make our way up the chain to the more familiar ones. Down to the Bone follows Irene, played by Vera Farmiga, who is an upstate New York mother of two. Married, holds a job as a supermarket checker, and is a cocaine addict. Her husband, played by Clint Jordan, is also a drug user, but does not support Irene's decision to enter rehab and clean up her life after she realizes how her drug use affects the children. In rehab, she meets Bob, played by Hugh Dillon, a nurse whose sobriety success story further inspires her. But Irene soon finds beating addiction holds greater consequences than addiction itself. So just remember, kids, white lines don't do it. The film premiered at the 2004 Sundance Film Festival and received critical acclaim, with Farmiga's performance being especially praised. She was an already established actress before Down to the Bone, but it is safe to say that the film helped boost her career to new heights, being that she would star in Martin Scorsese's The Departed two years later. Check this one out if you're looking for a lesser-known drama that packs a punch. Return. This indie feature is one that has definitely been overlooked. 2011's Return is a micro-budget indie starring not just one, but three huge names. Linda Cardellini, Michael Shannon, and John Slattery. It tells the simple, compelling, and atmospheric story of a female soldier returning home from combat and struggling to adjust to everyday life as a normal citizen. Besides having incredible performances, the story is more than enough to keep you invested for a good 98 minutes. Take Shelter Take Shelter is one that stars a familiar name from our previous entry, and he's more than known for starring in indie features. Yes, folks, Michael Shannon himself stars in this incredible psychological thriller about Curtis LaForge, a man who lives in a small Ohio town with his loving wife, played by Jessica Chastain, and a hearing-impaired daughter, played by Toba Stewart. However, things get a little creepy when Curtis begins having terrifying dreams about an apocalypse that threatens them all. Rather than listening to reason from his wife, he begins building a storm shelter in the backyard and his strange behavior causes tension in their marriage and the surrounding community. The film is actually the fourth collaboration between Shannon and the director Jeff Nichols. It was critically acclaimed upon release and Shannon's haunting and at times terrifying and amazing performances definitely won over the masses. Check this one out if you're looking for a good psychological thriller. Fruitvale Station all three of the collaborations between Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan has had Jordan bring out terrific performances inside of amazing movies. The difference with Fruitvale Station is that nobody saw them coming. There's little of the fibrous, confident style that Coogler demonstrated in Creed and Black Panther here. Instead, the fact-based Fruitvale Station, about the killing of Oakland resident Oscar Grant by BART officers in 2009, perceives observationally and existentially, adopting a last-day-in-the-life structure to fully dimensionalize a character whose fame and death threaten to overshadow his actual identity. The film was an absolute success, both critically and financially. Coogler's wisdom in styling the movie as a showcase can't be overstated. Jordan's brilliant, magnetic acting is spectacular and compelling stuff, and this film looks more than ever like ground zero for a major career. You gotta check this one out. The Florida Project. Another actor who has proven to be more than magnetic in smaller films, Willem Dafoe stars in this low-budget hit about a six-year-old girl, Mune, and her two best friends who forge their own adventures in the shadow of the most magical place on Earth. While Mune's struggling mom and a kind-hearted motel manager, played by Dafoe, protect the kids from the harsh reality that surrounds them. Sean Baker is one of the most personal and unique directors working today, and the supposed king of low-budget features. 
I mean, he made an entire movie on an iPhone for crying out loud. The Florida Project is a compelling and realistic look into the lives of some very interesting characters, viewed mostly through the innocent eyes of children. Defoe gives an incredible performance and was even nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars. Check this one out if you want to see a truly great indie feature. Hey, everybody. You still with us? We're about to get into some more low-budget films that you may or may not know, but we'll still run through them to see if you might catch a new favorite. Also, just a quick reminder that if you leave your email and subscribe with us today, you can receive a free PDF on how to become a successful social media influencer. Halloween. Yeah, we were eventually going to get to this one. Halloween is a horror classic about none other than Michael Myers, trying to have some Halloween fun, so to speak. Hey, hey, come on, guys. Why, why are you running away? Besides being a staple of the slasher genre, Halloween also introduced Jamie Lee Curtis into the spotlight, as this was one of her very first films. She's set to star in the upcoming Halloween sequel, Halloween Kills, coming this October, and we couldn't be more excited to see her on screen again. Besides Curtis, Donald Pleasance plays a rugged old psychiatrist that is one of the best parts of the entire film. He's just iconic. And, of course, there's that oh-so-familiar score composed by the director, John Carpenter himself. So, I'd like to play a game. This iconic line was introduced in the first of way too many movies in the Saw franchise. Luckily, the first entry still holds up as somewhat of a cult classic. Director James Wan made the first film for only $1.2 million, and it went on to gross over $100 million worldwide. Carrie Elwes, most famous for his leading role in The Princess Bride as well as other roles like Robin Hood Men in Tights, stars alongside the film's screenwriter Lee Wanell. The film also has great performances from Danny Glover and Monica Potter. It's best to see this one before the gazillion other ones. Mad Max. When you hear Mad Max, you may be thinking about the 2015 smash hit Mad Max Fury Road, what some people don't know is that the original Mad Max was quite the cult classic and remains so to this day. And who was in that leading role? Well, good old Mel Gibson. The post-apocalyptic adventure film from George Miller was well received and many praised it for its action sequences and car chases. What surprised most was the budget of the film, which was a mere 400,000 Australian dollars. Holy crap. What this shows us is that you can actually make a good film with a measly budget. Oh, and also while paying Mel Gibson only 10,000 Australian dollars. <laughs> Sorry, Mel. Reservoir Dogs. What's more to be said about Quentin Tarantino's brilliant directorial debut? The film was made for only $1.2 million, but has an incredible cast consisting of Harvey Keitel, Michael Madsen, Tim Roth, Steve Buscemi, and Lawrence Tierney. You could say that it was a stroke of luck how Tarantino's script made it up through the ranks all the way to Harvey Keitel, but we're glad it reached him safe and sound. The plot is about six criminals hired to steal diamonds who do not know each other's true identity. While attempting the heist, the police ambushes them, leading them to believe that one of them is an undercover officer. The film itself is an indie masterpiece, so there's absolutely no debating whether or not you should watch it. So, you know, just Put the lime in the coconut and watch the damn thing. Well, folks, here we are at our number one pick. Brick. You may or may not have heard about Ryan Johnson's directorial debut, although you probably heard of Ryan Johnson himself in the last few years. Well, this low-budget mystery noir film stars one of his longtime collaborators, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. The plot of the film follows teenage loner Brendan Fry, who, after receiving a frantic phone call from his ex-girlfriend, learns that her dead body has been found. Yeesh. Vowing to solve her murder himself, he must infiltrate high school cliques that he previously avoided. His search for the truth places him before some of the school's roughest characters, leading to a confrontation with a drug dealer known as The Pin. It's one of the best mystery films out there. It's shot with a similar aesthetic feel as Cowboy Bebop, and it's just a great time overall. You gotta check this one out, gang. Well, we made it to the end. Do you think we should have added another indie hit in there somewhere? Well, let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed our selection and are planning to watch any of these films, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything else Patrol Clip. And until next time...